Hey everybody. So this is going to be hopefully a quick video on how you can use Excel to make APA formatted tables and figures. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. All right. So here, <coughs> excuse me. Here we've got some data. I made this up. It is based on prior research, but I made it up. All right. So we've got here, let's imagine that these are my means. All right. And let's just imagine that, again, I'm making this data up. So these are my means. <clears throat> these are my standard deviations. So I would just gonna move these over here. I'm going to change the numbers. And again, I'm just making it up. All right. The standard deviations would never be this consistent, but just for the purposes here. <clears throat> now, to make a bar graph, we simply have to highlight the numbers and labels that we want. We're going to go to click insert. We're going to come over here to bar graphs and click that first option. So I'll repeat that one more time. So I've highlighted what I want to graph, insert, click on bar graphs, choose the first one, boom. All right. Now, this is nowhere near APA formatted. All right. So um you can get uh an idea of how to or what's required for apa formatting by going to either looking in the manual all right the apa uh, formatting manual or going to the website alpurdue.edu uh, uh, and i'll include the link in this video in the description of this video but <clears throat> Here it is. All right, so here is a APA formatted table. And the way down here is an APA formatted figure. Now, you'll see colors in here. And while you might see that in uh, like on a poster, usually for publications, we just use black and white and we use patterns instead of colors. Um, so keep that in mind. Though using color is not a violation, it is traditionally expected, you are traditionally expected uh, to, sorry, I was doing things and not telling you what I was doing, uh, traditionally expected to use patterns instead of color. So how can we do that, right? So here we've got our data, <clears throat> all right? And if we compare it to the figure here, we can note that there's a lot of differences here, right? So there's no figure caption, there's no figure title. Um, you've got some other things. But a lot of these things um, are stylistic. I'm going to give you the style that's preferred, okay? Or at least the one that you see in graphs most. Graphs most. In the graphs that you see in journal articles most. So I'm going to delete the title here. I'm going to delete the cross ties. Now I am going to change the axis because the axis should reflect whatever your DV is. Uh, so the possible ranges. So in this example, <clears throat> I was making these numbers up on a one to nine scale. So that means the highest possible number is a nine, the lowest possible number is a one. So I'm going to just right click on the axis. See how I click, if I click places, you know, different things get highlighted. So I'm going to click on the axis, right click, click format axis, and that gives me this stuff over here. Now I can change by clicking on these bars here, axis options, I can change the minimum to one, and I can change the maximum to nine. <clears throat> now I usually set the minimum units to one, or the minor units to one, just to keep this nice and pretty. Now I'm gonna jump over here to fill in line. I'm not gonna do anything with fill, but I am gonna come to line and I'm gonna click solid line. Now what that does is it's gonna create a border right here between my axis and my graph. It just makes it look neater, and it's standard for uh, what you, those graphs you see in journals. Now I'm going to change the color to black. All right, that makes it clear and visible. One APA standard is that the elements of your chart must be easily seen. I'm going to click on this axis. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click on solid line, select black, boom, done. All right. Now, <clears throat> as I mentioned. Colors aren't typical for journal articles. So, in, so instead of keeping these colors, which technically there's nothing wrong with it, 
but I am going to change it so that's more typical for an APA journal. So I'm going to click on one. I'm going to come up here to. Now, what you may not notice is that when I'm clicking on different things, these things are changing. And the reason for that is because I'm this becomes the control panel for formatting whatever I'm currently selected, whatever I have currently selected. So if I'm clicking on this, then all of this controls the formatting for the axis. If I'm clicked on this, then all this controls all the formatting for this axis, etc. All right. So if I want to change the blues to solid black, all right, then I'm going to click on the blues. You see how the four dots indicating that it's highlighted or pop up. That tells you that you've highlighted uh, both of the blue bars. Now I can select only one of the blue bars if I want. I just click again. All right, but that's not what I want. I want both blue bars to be the same. So I'm going to click on both blue bars. <clears throat> come up here to fill, click solid fill, change the color to black. I'm also going to change the border because although you probably can't see it because the line is so thin, there's actually a, a thin blue line around that bar. But we want to change that too. So I'm going to click solid line, make sure it's black, and now I'm golden. Now I'm good. Now I want to change the orange bar, not to solid black, but I do want it to be white and black, but instead I'm going to use a pattern fill. All right, so to do that, I select my orange bars. I come over here to fill. I'm going to then <clears throat> go to uh, pattern fill. And I'm going to select that. Okay, that's one of the common ones. Um, you, you also see uh, the other direction, but this is the one I most commonly use. And then I'm going to come down to border, because again, although you can't see it, well, you can kind of see it a little bit. There's a thin blue line around that. Well, I don't want a thin blue line, so I want a thin black line. So I'm going to come to border, click solid line. It auto selects to black. Boom, done. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, the other thing is that we need to add a y-axis uh, label. And then also you see this black line around the chart area. We want to get rid of that. So I'm going to click on the chart area. You see how it's highlighted, right? I'm going to come over to border, right? And I'm actually going to click no line here. Now I'm going to click back on this on the figure and it's gone. All right. Now I'm going to come over here. I want my x-axis label. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the, the chart area, pull it over, so that there's enough room over here to insert a text box. Then I'm gonna go to insert. Well, sorry guys. There it is, sorry. So <clears throat> insert text, text box, and then I have to draw it. Now, I'm going to center this, and I'm going to label it whatever my DV is. So here my DV is um, uh, mood. Well, to make it more descriptive, positive mood. Okay. So then, because it ha it, this has to be the label for a vertical axis, I'm going to click on this circly thing up here and orient it so it's vertical. And then I'm gonna move it over here. Boom, I've got my y-axis label. Now, the last thing is that your legend needs to be actually in the chart area. So I'm just going to select it, move it up. I'm gonna pull this down so I have more room up here. And then I'm going to try and orient these so they stack one on top of the other instead of going long wise, wise like that. And there, we go. All right. Nice, clean, not quite done though, because I want to. Calibri is not a uh, APA. Traditionally, it's not a, it's not a traditionally accepted font. So I'm going to select the whole thing, come up here, change it to Times New Roman, change the size to 12. Boom. All right. Oh, look, it 
part of that's disappeared. So I'm gonna have to change the dimensions of this again. Pull it out, boom. All right, taken care of. Sorry, I'm trying to line it up with the middle. All right, now if you'll note, everything in here has changed except this, right? Because that text block isn't, Excel's not considering it part of the graph yet. So I'm just gonna select it. I'm gonna select that box and I'm gonna do what it did. I'm gonna change it to Times New Roman, 12, boom. And there's my graph, nice and pretty. All right, <clears throat> now, again, looking at this, I still need a figure name and a caption title, and then a, uh, so not a caption title, but a, a, a figure title, figure number, figure title, and then in a caption. That stuff can be added in Word, okay? So once you put this into Word, right, uh, then you can, above it, put in figure and its number, put in an actual figure title. The figure title needs to be descriptive, and then a figure caption, and the figure caption <coughs> should describe the contents of the table. Now what if I want, or of the figure, sorry. Now what if I want to make a table? Well that is a little bit easier. Again, I can do it in Excel, so I'm gonna copy this over and, and move down a little bit. Come on, I'm gonna put it here, all right. So we're gonna go up here to our example, all right? In fact, I think I like this one a little bit better. And I'm going to, sorry. I'm gonna try and, again, so read through here, all right, all the rules about it. I'm gonna show you very quickly how to make things like this. So for example, you'll know that there's no, there's no, uh, sorry, I said vertical earlier. The Y axis is, uh, um, is vertical. There's no, uh, mixing myself up. These are all horizontal borders and you can have horizontal borders in a table, but you can't have vertical borders, all right? So how do we make what we have in Excel here look like that. Well, <clears throat> the easiest thing to do, all right, make things roughly equal size, okay? Now the easiest way to do that for me, so what I did, if you'll note, is that this column is not the same width as this column. So I highlight both and change the size of one and it keeps them, and it applies that change to both columns. So now these are equally sized. Now, I want to put, <clears throat> because if we look in here, you know, you got your, call, your table number, you've got your table uh, title, and then you've got a line separating that. So we want a line at the top. So I'm just going to highlight these cells, come up here, select the drop down box, and I'm going to put a top border on there. Boom. Now, you see that there's lines under that. <clears throat> well, here, this applies to what's in this row. This applies to both of these rows, and this applies to both of these rows. So there's a, lot, there's a horizontal line here, but not here. This applies to this, so there's not a horizontal line here, and this applies to this, so there's not a horizontal line here. So the horizontal line separates information, all right? It helps you organize. But in our case, all right, um, these apply to this and we don't have anything here. That's empty space. That's probably not the best of ideas. So we can put, um, levels of self-esteem in here. And I'm just going to widen that so that it's the same size. I'm also going to, actually I'm going to undo that because I want all these columns to be the same size. So I'm going to highlight them and pull this out, and again, it keeps it standard, okay? Now, um, I'm also going to, because I'm going to, because I got the standard deviations up here, I'm going to broaden this out of that. So I'm gonna cut these and move them down, okay? I'm gonna cut this and move it over, and I'm gonna change the size of that in a second. I'm gonna put mean here, D here, 
And then I'm going to copy those so that we have the same thing for the no rejection condition. Move my means over. Okay. So just like here, where you've got a line separating mean and standard deviation, right? We're going to do the same thing. So we're going to put a line at the bottom, so a bottom border under those. All right. We're then going to put a bottom line under all of these. All right. Now I'm just going to, so I need the standard deviations. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to get them. And put them in there. <clears throat> all I'm doing is copying and pasting. Okay. I'm going to come back down. You see how it's broken here, the top line? So I just reselect the cells and select top border again. All right. Now, yeah, now I just need to put the bottom border on. Boom. Now, what I'm about to do is going to be a little tricky. Well, actually, before I get to that, I'm going to, I'm going to do all the easier things. I'm going to highlight the whole thing. I'm going to turn it all into Times New Roman. Put it all 12 point font. Now I'm going to take all of this and center it. Boom. I'm going to take this and center it as well. These actually stay left, stay uh, left aligned. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is a little, going to be a little weird. I'm going to well before I do that, I guess I need to standardize the size. So. I'm just going to change some things up so that I can keep all the thing the same. Okay, graph, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. You're not wanted. Go on. Go on. Go on. Get. All right. All right. So now um, I'm going to combine these cells. I'm going to right click. I'm going to uh, I'm going to merge those contents. So you see where I went. So I highlighted the cells I want to merge. I come up here to merge and center, drop down box, merge cells, boom. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Boom. You see how that's sticking out? So I need to do some adjusting right quick. So I'm going to pull that over until it's entirely seen. And ta-da! There we go. There is our table. Then I just copy and paste that into Word, and I add my uh, tables number, my table title, and my uh, any kind of figure tech. Or there's not a figure tech on here, but any kind of notes down here. All right. That, my friends, is how you use Excel to make bar graphs and tables and how to make them APA formatted. Now, again, like I said, I will post the link to the Al Purdue website uh, in the description of the video. Um, but if you have the APA formatting guide, use it. I mean, if you plan to have a future in, in, in psychology, um, that thing is going to be immensely helpful. So I would, I would encourage you to go ahead and invest that. All right. All right, guys, that's it for me for this video. I, it went longer than I expected. I'm sorry for that. But hopefully, uh, you will uh, have some clear direction in how to use Excel to format your tables and figures. All right, guys, that's it for me. As always, if you have any questions, send them my way. If not, take it easy.